from an update from the Bluebird Simulations team who are working on a 757 on Microsoft Flight Sim to a new Airbus aircraft coming to the simulator very soon. In today's video, I've got some awesome news. Whether you like airliners, general aviation, or flight simulation as a whole, be sure to stick around. Without further delay, let's get right into it. Okay, so we'll kick it off with a little update from the Bluebird Simulations team on their Boeing 757 payware, which is coming to Microsoft Flight Sim on both PC, of which it will be coming to first, first and by the looks of it eventually Xbox. If you're unfamiliar with the Bluebird Simulation 757, it's of course the much loved airliner of which was released almost or over 40 years ago now. And Bluebird Simulations is a development team which is relatively new to the scene as far as I know and they're being helped out by Just Flight. The aircraft itself in the simulator will be not study level but not rubber cheever it's sort of striking a good balance to ensure that all sort of simulator pilots can fit right into it how that works out well we don't know exactly yet does that mean they'll skimp on some systems well it probably does but it probably means they'll do it in a way where you'll find some of the internal systems can either be automated or automated out of the box i'm not going to jump to any conclusions here just yet it'll be interesting to see how they do but as you're seeing from the new screenshots on the screen now, in the cockpit on approach with an auto land, it does look pretty cool. Now me looking at the primary flight display, obviously you can tell it's an auto land because you can see the glide slope is set to flare, which means the aircraft should automatically flare once it gets close to the runway. To be honest, I've never seen an auto land in a 757. I know it can of course be done, but it would be interesting to see how autopilot handles that flare with quite a long but thin aircraft. Only two screenshots, but it's nice to see this aircraft coming along nicely. And of course, if they're testing out auto land, albeit with some tweaks, as they say, it means they're coming over to the final stages. You know, they're implementing less fundamental systems because of course if the aircraft flies it flies auto land is sort of a plus point i guess but it shows at least they're not skimping on some of these secondary features of which many people would find incredibly important although it would surprise those that haven't been in flight simulation that an aircraft could land itself so once again it's about striking that balance and i'm all for it hopefully it'll be good it will be payware no information on the pricing just yet although it will be Reasonable. Now we move over from a good aircraft to a more controversial aircraft. Flight simulation of course does have its controversial moments which is quite funny uh, to the external viewer I'd imagine. Some people look at it as quite a mundane thing but somehow I guess, it's, I guess it's always the case. People always manage to slip some controversy and therefore some arguments into it. Well Latin VFR I imagine we'll do that again as they're back with a new aircraft, the Airbus A319, coming soon to both PC and Xbox. This will be payware, and if it's anything like the last A321 they worked on, it's basically going to be a reskin of the default A320 cockpit. Maybe they have learned their lesson, maybe it'll be a bit better, but from what we're seeing, it's not going to be. It does come with two engine options and the Airbus corporate jet, but of course, for payware, I'm not sure this fits the bill. You know, they are basically charging you for a reskin of the default A320 cockpit. But to be fair, it's my responsibility as a content creator to say that we can't really judge it just yet because it hasn't been released. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money. I'm sort of just an advisory role, I guess. People are going to spend their money on what they want. Some people will love it. Some people will hate it, I'm sure. At the very least, it's got a very nice interior by the looks of it. They've clearly spent some effort into the uh, corporate interior. That looks pretty cool. And at the very least, those on Xbox that are waiting um, for a sort of A319. And of course, at the end of the day, there will be some slight differences internally from the default A320, such as weight, engine power, sound as well is normally upgraded. But it will feel very similar to the default A320. Make of that what you will and leave your thoughts down below. Moving over to the wonderful world of general aviation. We move over to Flight Simware. Some of you may be familiar with some of their products. 
such as the Cessna 414 414, I don't know why I pronounced it wrong there, the 414, which should be on the marketplace. It was released on there about a week ago now, so do leave your thoughts on that. Anyway, they've confirmed that the next project they're working on is the Beechcraft Sierra C24R. Now, I haven't got a screenshot or any renders of this, so I'm just going to put a real-life one on the screen now. But hey, it's nice to see another general aviation aircraft that isn't so popular being worked on. It's always nice to have a bit of diversity with an aircraft. What do you guys think of it? The Sierra is meant to be a really smooth aircraft in real life, with the controls being very smooth, very responsive, and sort of moving through the air like a gracious breeze. I have just read that off aviationconsumer.com, I haven't flown this aircraft in real life, but Beechcraft normally do make pretty good aircraft, so if you have flown on one in real life, leave your thoughts down below. No information on pricing, what this will be released on, or release date, it's very early days for this project, they've just confirmed that it will be the one they're working on next. Am I excited for it? Well, not really excited off the top of my seat, you know, jumping up and down. But hey, it's always very nice to have more aircraft coming along, and I'm sure some of you in the comments will be happy about it. Me, personally, I'm not too phased, but I'll report on the news anyway. Now, finally, sticking with the theme of general aviation, Navigraph have previewed VFR charts for their new bit of software, Navigraph Charts 8. Now, if you don't know what Navigraph is, it's basically sort of a data provider for float simulation. I've got a subscription that's fantastic for IFR charts, adding basically a fairly realistic moving map that you pay for as an external application, and it will have absolutely anything on there to do with actually navigating um, IFR. For example, it'll have airport star and SID charts, which you just click on an airport, right click, and then you get a menu up. You can also do flight planning on there. It works very well with quite a few aircraft and Microsoft Flight Sim integrating into VATSIM and IVAO as well. But I don't believe they've worked on VFR charts before, so it's very nice to see they've moved over to this because it will make it a lot easier to flight plan. I won't have to go over to websites and do it. Hopefully, it will be all very much integrated like the Navigraph chart system is for IFR flights. From the short trailer on YouTube, it looks very nice. Leave your thoughts on this down below. It will be payware. Technically, you could use it on Xbox if you've got a laptop. You just set it up next to your simulator. I guess it won't be able to track you like it does on PC, but you'll still be able to use it for some, some charts on your screen, of course. But it is more PC orientated, being perfectly honest with you. There we have it, guys. For me today, that is all. I hope you've enjoyed this Microsoft Flight Sim news. If you have, leave your thoughts down below. It really does help me out. I'll see you around, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>